Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In the previous lecture, we have studied lexical categories. We have seen their semantic, morphological, and syntactic or distributional properties. In today's lecture, we're going to see another class of categories, which is the one of functional categories. We're going to first to study their definition. So how can we define functional categories? Before defining them, first recall that functional categories are classified as belonging to a closed class. That is to say, they do not allow the addition of new items to them. We have seen this before, and we said that, for example, you will never see in English the addition of new prepositions or new conjunctions or new negative markers. The one that you know from the, uh, many years before are still exist and will remain as they are uh, uh, most likely. Concerning their definition, they can be defined as, uh, as parts of speech that provide grammatical or inflectional information for phrases or sentences. Examples include determiners, auxiliaries, verbs, prepositions, complementizers, negative markers. Uh, another kind of definition given by Noam Chomsky in his minimalist program framework, functional categories for him are items of the lexicon without substantive content, without semantic lexical content. In other words, they are items that carry the grammatical aspects of a structure. Thus, by taking them out of the sentence, one would still understand the meaning, although it would not be totally grammatical. But the content is there, the meaning is there. By analogy, we have seen this with in morphology, when we said that, for example, the root is all that remains when you remove all the affixes. Exactly here, in a sentence, when you remove all the functional categories, what remains are substantive words with substantive meaning. Now we move to the second point after the definition, which is about the list of functional categories. In the English language, the inventory of functional categories include the following items, determiners, auxiliary verbs, pronouns. And we are going to see these first three in what remains of this recording. There are others like prepositions, conjunctions, complementizers, and negative markers. We are going to see them in uh, the forthcoming recording. So the first uh, functional category is that of determiners. They are notated as D or DET. Semantically, determiners are words placed in front of a noun to make it clear what the noun refers to. They are also known as modifying words that determine the kind of reference a noun or a noun phrase has. In their morphological uh, characteristics, the, the category of determiners includes the following units, articles A and B. V, including their variations like an, quantifiers like many, any, all, several, and so on, and the possessive pronouns like my, your, his, and her. Concerning this, their syntactic distribution, determinants come before nouns. They come before nouns or sometimes if there is an, uh, an adjective, they come before the adjective, which comes before the noun. So the sequence will be, uh, first we have the terminer, auxiliary, which is uh, the, the, not the, the, the adverb, which is optional, and then the, 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 the noun. The following function category is the one of the auxiliary verbs. Semantically, an auxiliary verb adds grammatical meaning to the clause in which it appears. So it adds a grammatical reference to the clause in which it appears. Auxiliaries are also used to express tense, aspect, modality, voice, 
and emphasis in the structure in which they occur. Auxiliary verbs are usually associated with a main verb, which carries the meaning of the action. The main verbs provide the main semantic content of the clause. Morphologically, they include common auxiliaries like be, have, and do. It, the, the, the category of auxiliaries also include modal verbs like will, would, may, might, must, should, can, etc. Concerning the syntactic distribution, an auxiliary is always followed by a verb. Uh, so we have ox plus v in verb phrases. It is negated directly. So you have the auxiliary verb plus the negative marker not plus the verb. So if you want to negate a full verb, we always resort to a, a helping verb, which, might, which can be an auxiliary or a model. Whereas if you want to negate a sentence in which you already have an auxiliary or a model verb, you don't need to resort to any kind of other verbs. You confine yourself to uh, constructing the negative structure by just the addition of not. So we say, for example, he is not here. Uh, he cannot come, and so on. The third category of the terminals is the one of the pronouns of the function. Is one of pronouns. So the third category of the uh, of Sorry, the third category of pronouns. The, th the third category of function category is the one of pronouns. They are grammatical function. They are words that stand for a noun or a noun or a whole noun phrase. Uh, morphologically, it is a category that includes personal pronouns. Uh, and we have subject personal pronouns and object personal pronouns. Subject personal pronouns like I, you, he, she, it, we, they. Object personal pronouns like me, him, her, us, them. They are called as such because subject pronouns, they occur in subject positions. Object pronouns, they occur in the object position. Positive pronouns, okay, is also, are also included within pronouns, though it also makes sense to classify them as determiners, as we have seen before. In their syntactic distribution, pronouns and possessive behave differently. Pronouns act as nouns, that is to say they have the same distribution, they function as subjects or objects or whatever. Uh, whatever function the noun can take, a pronoun can also have the same function. Whereas the possessive pronouns, they act as modifying, okay, modifiers of the nouns. They occur before the nouns. So concerning the pronouns, we can say I run, but you cannot say my run. Concerning the positives, you can say John likes my house, but you cannot say John likes I house. The uh, remaining uh, functional categories are prepositions, conjunctions, complementizers, negative markers. We're going to see these in the following lecture, inshallah. So Thank you very much and see you then.